Hey, Nate. Uh, Good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, Grant Nelson, uh, what kind of role do you guys see for him, or how does he fit kind of in the 4-5 or five range? Yeah, I mean, he's he's been really good in practice so far. He's going to have a little bit different role than probably anybody we've had so far. You know, he's not he's not a guard like Brandon Miller, but he's certainly not a typical big. You know, he's going to play with the ball in his hands a lot more than what a typical big would. Uh, but he's going to set pick and rolls. He's going to roll. He's going to pop. He's going to handle and pick and rolls. He's going to play on a perimeter. We'll post him against mismatches. So, I mean, he's we're going to put him all over the floor. To be honest with you, so be a little bit different than probably anybody we've had here before. But maybe a cross between Brandon and Clowney. Not saying he's got the best of both of those, but you know, probably a little bit more perimeter oriented and uh, handling it than Clowney, but not not quite to the level of Brandon with some of that stuff. Obviously, kind of a rare circumstance this offseason to have all three assistants leave. And just what was that like um, trying to replace them? And was it ever a little bit lonely, maybe not having anybody around for a while? Yeah, I mean, if I had any time to think about it, maybe I would have been lonely. I didn't. There was, you. I mean, it was great to be honest with you, just because it speaks to where we've gotten this program in four years to where three other athletic departments chose our three assistants to go lead their basketball program. So, you know, super happy for Brian and Charlie and Petway, you know, and they all deserved it. And I'd be following their teams close this year. But, you know, it made for an interesting offseason. And then, you know, the amount of player turnover, it, it got real busy there in a hurry. So I, uh, I think we've done a great job replacing those three. I, I love our current staff. I think they're – working really well together. They've got great chemistry, you know, it gave us a chance to bring in some fresh thoughts, ideas, which we did, but, you know, we had a great staff before. I think we've got a great staff now. Yeah. And it, yeah, I didn't have many days off this summer between trying to hire staff and trying to put a roster together. We, we had, we had a lot of work to do this summer, but I, I like where we're at. I love our staff and I like our roster. I, I love the guys we have on the team. So I think despite the work we had to do, I think we got it to where we needed to get it to. Hey, Coach, I think it's been about three months since uh, Mo Diabati's injury. Just do you have an update on him? And uh, also, I think Mo Wagyu, we didn't see him do much today either. Yeah, so they both had um, similar issues where when they came, you know, something came up in the physical process. And I think our, you know, Clark does a great job. Our doctors, between Clark and Dr. Bittner and the orthopedic doctors, up at Andrews, they, they do a really good job making sure that the guys are healthy and both those guys had something come up in the process. So, you know, Diabate had the uh, knee surgery. He's coming. He's no longer in a brace. He's doing basketball skill level. He's still not doing anything live, but he's he's able to pass, triple, shoot, do, do some of that stuff, and we'll gradually get him in. They're both, you know, a month, give or take away, from being in live stuff. Uh, Wage, something similar to, he had a kind of through the process, um, had procedure done on his foot. So he, uh, he, he was in a boot for a while. He's out of the boot. He's same thing. He's able to do some ball handling, shooting all that, but nothing live yet. So hopefully within an, another month uh, or so, give or take a little bit, we'll have both those guys back and to add to our, Front court depth, uh, which we need right now. Uh, Colin, Cord Co Colin Carter, last year's team, was just the chemistry across the locker room. This with all the turnover you've already mentioned. How do you build up that chemistry kind of in this time while also getting the guys ready for you know, on the court? So. Yeah, I, we had great chemistry last year. I think that's part of the reason we were number one in the country and had the year we had. Uh, we, we know that it comes with the culture you uh, build. I think we've done a – really good job with both the transfers and the freshmen making sure they're really high character kids. You know, we started to get involved with some and, and backed out just because we didn't want to bring anybody without real high character into the program. So our guys have done a great job with themselves, just getting together off the court, 
you know, we've got three guys back, three scholarship guys back from last year with Pringle, Aaron, and Ryland. I think, you know, I said Aaron, I meant Pringle, Sears, and Ryland. Uh, you know, those three guys have done a good job. And then Aaron, who I mentioned, come in. You know, he's fifth-year guy. He has the extra year. You know, he's had some leadership. So I think between great leadership, guys doing things off the court, we did have our uh, – team retreat that we do every year that I thought really brought our guys together, you know, just to different things off the court. And then also having them play with all different guys all summer, putting them on different teams. So they play with each other, but really just having great guys that like to see their teammates succeed. You know, they're really happy when their teammates are successful while at the same time competing, understand that the competition and practice is making both of them better, you know, which in, the long run will make the team better, which in the long run, as we've seen here, you know, when you when your team's really good, we got to say when the tide rises, all the boat tries. The two years we've won the regular season conference tournament, both are we've had two guys drafted both those two years, and they both improved their strat stock pretty significantly. So, you know, everybody wants to see themselves improve, but in basketball, you don't do that without the team being great with or for the team to be great, you got to have great chemistry and everybody's got to be really happy for everybody else's success. So I think we've gotten a good head start on it. These next six weeks of practice are going to, you know, we're going to have to really do a great job building the team uh, chemistry as well. Uh, what kind of growth have you seen from Ryland over the course of this off season and how do you kind of see his role increasing this season? I mean, he's gotten a little taller for one. So there's actual physical growth. There's other areas of growth as well. He's shooting the ball really well. He's much more comfortable in our system. He's much more comfortable speaking up. You know, when you come in as a freshman, you were playing high school last year. It's a lot different now that he's played in college. You know, he's comfortable with how we play. He's comfortable speaking up, talking to the younger guys. He's more aggressive, attacking the rim. He's better on defense. Just his overall growth has been really good. And, you know, in talking to his dad in high school, you know, he made a big jump from his freshman to his sophomore year. And he had a really good freshman year, I thought, for us. Obviously, we had some other freshmen that were, you know, at the second pick in the draft. So we had the 21st pick in the draft. They were both freshmen with him. So he walked in in a pretty incredible freshman class. But he, he himself had a really good year. I mean, if you look at what he was able to do on – the number one team in the country, uh, you know, most freshmen in the country would have traded that. Probably 99% of them would have traded spots with him for sure. So he had a, he had a really good freshman year, but we anticipate a big jump in going into sophomore year. He's really been shooting the ball at a high clip here lately too. Was there more roster turnover this offseason than you were expecting, or is it just kind of part of your job now where you know you're going to have to do a lot of roster there, change? There was definitely a little bit more than what we probably expected um, or anticipated, but in shoot, talking to some of the coaches out there, some of the rosters get 100% turnover one season to the next. So, I mean, it's the fact we've got three out of 12 uh, guys coming back is, um, you know, not as many as we like, but it's a little bit par for the course with what's going on, especially with the success that we had with, you know, nobody really expected Clowney to be gone after one year. Well, he ends up being the 21st pick in a draft. So, you know, <clears throat> for us to be able to replace him with a guy like Jaron Stevenson, you know, I think Jaron's real similar to Clowney. You know, <clears throat> if Clowney hadn't left, we, we wouldn't have been able to go get Jaron. You know, Jaron is looking, you know, to be able to step in, play right away. Clowney going in the draft, you know, open that up. Plus, you know, he saw what we did with Clowney. So, you know, the success that we had with the players that we had uh, leave helped open some doors in the recruiting that really helped us with some current players and it's going to help us with some players we're recruiting in the 24 class as well. So, no, there was definitely more turnover than we anticipated, but I think I think that's the case with most of the, most of the coaches in Division One basketball right now. I was actually going to ask you about Jaron and get the reclassification process and how, how you see him fitting in with the team. Yeah, uh, he – he came in and similar to uh, Mo and Mo had to 
do a little rehab on a, an injury we didn't know about until we went through the uh, physical process. So he wasn't able to get in live stuff immediately, and he didn't get here till the second half of summer. So he's only been going live really since we got back in the fall, kind of after Labor Day for about a month. He, he's been great, though. I mean, he's similar to Clowney. Obviously, no two players are exactly alike, but, you know, they're both 6'10", can both move on the perimeter, can, you know, both be great defensive players and Jaron's still learning defensive system as they all are to, to be honest, but you know, he's a great kid. They're real similar in that they're both really coachable, want to be coached, great attitudes about them. You know, and Clowney shot it pretty well and Jaron's shooting it really well. You know, Clowney had some stretches there where he, he missed a lot. You know, he had two, stretches during the year. I think we and him were talking when he was back for the Texas football game. I hadn't realized. I think he at one point he missed 19 in a row and another point during the year he missed 21 in a row. You know, he's making the point if you throw those two two stretches out, I was over 40% coach. Well, all 40 of those shots came in game play, so you had to count them. So I think, you know, we might – hopefully Jaron doesn't go through as many, you know, those long stretches and ends up shooting a little higher percentage than Noah did because he because he's a really good shooter. But they're similar. I, I anticipate him being a huge part of what we're doing just with 6'10", athletic, moves well, can play on the perimeter and shoot it. I, he's exactly what we're looking for in the front court. Like last year, you kept that last scholarship open. How close were you to filling that, and how do you see the uh, the backcourt depth with um, you know Javon obviously leaving and losing a backup point guard? You know, when, when we lost Javon, that, that kind of opened that last scholarship up. It, it, we didn't really get that close with anybody. We were never, you know, it's open. If, uh, you know, last year it was open and Cosby took it halfway through the year. I don't know if we'll have anybody like that this year. It, it, the option's there. If we do, if not, it's fine. We never really played 13 guys in rotation anyways. it does. You know, shoot, I think. Some teams last year had 10 guys on scholarship. I think that's, you know, when, when the transfer portal and all this new stuff happened, I think that's one of the kind of byproducts of this. You know, you kind of leave some spots open for transfers. Well, then you're not going to fill them with guys that aren't good enough. And then a lot of a lot of scholarships are just now not being used to kind of across the country. The fact that we have one on one opens – Really, there, shoot, there was high major coaches that we played against last year. They had three open scholarships. So, no, we, we never got that close to using it, and we'll see what happens with it this year. Thank you. All right, thanks. Appreciate Good seeing you guys again.